that you don't care. <laughs> yeah. Cryptocurrency, crypto, crypto. I see yo, I see yo. It's true. All right, so let's have everyone to introduce yourself a little bit from let's from Naim. Naim. Sniper. Sniper TV. My name is Naeem al Obeidi, and I founded Snipers Tube. And we, uh, we're a community of investors that, you know, uh, trade. I'm, I have a trading background. I got into the sphere around 2010, and I was a Machinima director at the time, posting gaming videos, and I'd grown a community on Machinima. Um, and I was looking to accept payments online, but I couldn't use PayPal because I wasn't over the age of 18 at the time. And... I went on to Google and I was just searching for alternate methods and I found Bitcoin in 2010 and I started utilizing that and accepting Bitcoin for payment. That was the only thing I accept. And I fast forward in 2014, I started trading traditional markets. And in 2014, I realized the amount of volatility that was in this market was just extreme and there was a lot more of an opportunity as a trader. And so I liquidated all of my capital in 2014, began trading went full-time in trading. I started making YouTube videos in early of 2017. And as that progressed, you know, I started to uh, really uh, grow a following and, and it was extremely unexpected. And um, as that grew, I also had grown my Discord as well, which was the group of investors. And that has been extremely fun because now I have a team of full-time analysts that provide daily market updates, uh, information, and things like that. And now I have the time to focus on more so of the things that really matter and that you know I can only focus on like doing a lot of different things. I'm also working with Michael Jackson's former manager, Mark Lamica now, and he managed Michael Jackson for 20 years in Hollywood and until the day he died. And so he's got all of these different connections in Hollywood and you know we're partly funding concerts like Drake and Bruno Mars with crypto now and it's been fun to be able to really apply cryptocurrencies to an actual industry. And, and that's kind of Amen. what I do now. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. Brit. My name is uh, Britton Adams. I'm known, a.k.a. Brit VR. Um, I got into the cryptocurrency scene in 2014. Uh, I started my channel probably like at the end of 2014, 2015. Um, I wanted to get into something that was brand new that uh, just invest wise. I bought my first Bitcoin in 2014 and I didn't want to use the traditional market. Um, I learned from my mom losing her house that, you know, traditional markets could harm people. So I want to look for something new. So um, I got into that. Then I started my YouTube channel. Uh, I, I mine cryptocurrency. So I talk about that. And I also, uh, I don't trade as much. I just mine. And I talk about news, uh, general news that um, people really don't want to read. Um, I tell my subscribers, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time reading and trying to learn as much information to give to people who really don't have the time. Um, I feel like I don't have the time most of the time since I have a full-time job, but um, to be able to give people information and hopefully they can read themselves, um, I just want to spread the word. Kevin. Hi, everyone. I'm Kevin. Don't have a cool crypto name, but I'm with Bitcoin for Beginners. Um, a little bit about me. I come from a tech or engineering background, um, just ran into Bitcoin or heard about it, read about it back in university, was super fascinated about like the distributed nature, how it all worked, but I was a, a poor student, so rather save my money for like beer or pizza than buying Bitcoin. Um, but last year I um, finally just dove in, invested, really got excited about all the possibility in this space and me and some other people um, decided to build Bitcoin for beginners and obviously by the name it's for beginners, we make resources, we try to help out people in a variety of way, um, just try to help them get started, navigate all the hurdles in the space, and that's really our mission and what everything we do is focused on. Cool, Elliot. How's it going? My name's Elliot Weinman. Uh, I go by Elio Trades. We have a channel called FUD TV. I co-founded with uh, David Murray out there in the audience. Uh, we come from a product development background, mostly in software combined about 30 years experience and you know crypto for us was just a really interesting way that we felt like we could really kind of play VC on these early stage projects and uh, get involved from an investment standpoint. 
obviously we love you know the technology all of the implications of it um, started making YouTube videos just because uh, it just seemed really fun and it was uh, you know crypto has just been such a labor of love or a, I guess an exciting thing to be researching and studying that we wanted to uh, share that excitement with other people uh, obviously everyone probably knows there's a lot of good information out there and there's a lot of not so good information so uh, the goal was just try to be on the uh, the good information side of it and you know focus on entertaining people and giving them good uh, good pieces of content that could leave them better off than before they'd watched it. And yeah, so it's exciting stuff. I'm actually developing a, a couple different projects. The main focus is a new dApp, a social media dApp uh, called Tron Chat. So yeah. Cool. Uh, hi, I'm Ben from the BTC Sessions. Uh, I've been in crypto since uh, early 2014. Um, just kind of started dabbling in Bitcoin, heard about it a few times before that, and, and kind of did a few months of research before ever buying anything. Um, and then I started trying to find content to help me through to navigate those waters. And there was stuff out there, um, but I just found it very dry. A lot. I, I shouldn't say everything, but a, a lot of the content, like, how do I do this? And I'd finally find a video on it, but it was... You're sitting there and you're like, oh my God, okay, <laughs> let's get through this. Um, but so I, I come from more of a, my job before this was I used to teach little kids how to break dance. And so, <laughs> thanks. Cool. Um, yeah, yeah. So I would do in school residencies. I'd go to a school, I'd be with a, kids ranging from kindergarten to high school, and I would have to teach complex movements to children and have them learn an entire dance within a week and be performing by Friday. And so that act of explaining things on a level that a child could understand actually translated quite well into making my own content around crypto. And, and seeing how the, the content was being presented at the time, um, I wanted to make it fun and engaging, but also easily understandable. So that was kind of what I set out to do, and I loved explaining things to people. I found I found it fun, and being a former performer, um, I wanted to kind of give a Casey Neistat vibe to crypto. So a lot of my videos, you see me walking and talking in like a splice of uh, a location that I'm at and a lot of travel and stuff like that. So that's kind of where I got started. And I'm very happy to see how things have progressed because now there's so much great content out there and it's super entertaining as well. And I, I think this place is just really growing to a spot that I've come to appreciate seeing everybody on stage here and, and a lot of other great people I've met while I've been here. Coin Daddy. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, I have a real name. It's Aria. Um, Coin Daddy is a moniker that uh, I created last year in October. Um, before then, how I got started in crypto was in 2013. Um, I went to meetup.com and uh, there was this Bitcoin meetup that was happening in New York where I was living. And uh, I'd heard of Bitcoin like I'm sure everybody did, but I don't know. I think I was lonely that night or something and I decided to take the plunge. So I came to that meetup. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I yeah. <laughs> things happen when I'm lonely. Anyways, okay. <laughs> yeah, so um, I went to this meetup group and uh, Trace Mayer was there. I don't know if you guys know his content. Um, he's one of the original Bitcoin crowd and Andreas Antonopoulos was there and Roger Veer and all these guys. And so I kind of got hooked into that group uh, pretty early on. And one of the guys there invited me to his apartment a couple days ago. I know how that sounds, just chill. Um, and uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and then so, so he, he showed me how, <laughs> I can't, I'm gonna read it. Yeah, stop it, okay. Yeah, so show you. He, he had all these mining rigs and at the time, I, by the way, I have a cigar, I don't know. Uh, so he, he had these, um, I don't know if you guys mined back in the day, um, but we used to hang GPUs in a milk crate, like off of zip ties. Uh, so he had this whole setup and, um, took the time and he taught me about it. So uh, I rode the first wave and all this stuff. So uh, or, or I guess earlier Bitcoin person. And then there was a flat line for those years. And then just last year, really on a lark, um, I decided I would make this project called Coin Daddy. And I came out with a song and I just thought that nobody was doing Bitcoin music. Um, and nobody was doing Bitcoin music the way I wanted it to be done, which was like actually about like what's going on in the community. Everyone was just like, yo, hold, hold, hold. Okay, one more, I want more. At least I do. 
So I, I, I did, um, and I created that, and then uh, it kind of snowballed, and I had kept my identity separate from it at first, and then um, I decided I needed to lean in once it happened, uh, and then it's been kind of a weird ride uh, since, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to share how it happened if later if you want. <laughs> awesome, cool. Cool, this is really cool. Hi. Everyone, my name is Heidi, and uh, I'm the CEO of Boosto. So I'm a serial entrepreneur. This is my second startup, so the first one. And this second one, we uh, the first one was boot, boot, bootstrapped, so we didn't have any VCs. And the second one was a VC back. It's a VC backed company here down the street, so like five minutes from here, Burning Game. Um, so like, what we do, Boosto is a DApp store, which means we provide tools. Uh, other people can build dApps and throw it into the store and everybody make money. So so we are providing the tools to developers they can use. Also, this uh, developers always have a problem to promote their dApps. So we do have a lot of people are in our system are um, working with developers work on the smart contract. Everybody, if they share or refer something happening in the dApps, everybody get a cut. So this was Boosto. So, but, but why I become a, so I always, I'm also a, a crypto Heidi. And why I've become a crypto Heidi is since we're providing tools for other people to build dApps. And I'm in a um, startup people, server animal for a while. And people love to ask me questions, how to raise in capital, how to work on the project, how to uh, find the team members, how to also, also like investors also ask me what's going on with your anybody using your protocol to write dApps. So I've become a person, I interview a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, CEOs, and investors about what's going on recently to save my time. Everybody keeps asking me, hey, did you see anything? So now I'm just upload all the videos to YouTube. So a lot of my uh, people watching my YouTube are either entrepreneurs, uh, people are looking for funding, or the investors looking for funds. Not So I'm not really educates market about how to trade or anything. It's really depend for that, for that purposes. So we do have the accelerator called, called Boosto, also down the street. Um, I'm very, very happy that I can contribute to the startup community and also this crypto technology community. And I am really enjoy the personality to be crypto, crypto Heidi. So I'm learning from everybody here today uh, and everybody sitting here today with us. So the first sharp question for you guys. As I'm an also an entrepreneur, so a lot of people have projects, right? And you guys are the celebrity in the crypto space right now. And you guys definitely get approached by a lot of projects. Projects has money, projects, they don't have money, they come to you. How do you choose the projects or how do you work with those guys? Do they pay you guys? Or there's a coin, uh, coin shilling thing going on. So what's your opinion? Anybody can grab the mic. Um, I'm going to jump in here. I <laughs> Okay, how do I put this? Um, full disclosure, I have never done a single video where a project has come to me and said, hey, I, can you promote us? Or hey, can you do a, a review of us? Um, and... There's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, so I, I mean, already I'm coming from a perspective of like an educational kind of. That's that's how I structure my channel. That's a large part of it. Um, but you get so many. Last year you get so many emails. They're tapering off a little bit, which is good. Like um, how many emails per day or per? Uh, I don't know. It's dependent on the day. But <laughs> <laughs> so so I would see that and and. I, I guess I was lucky enough that I kind of started my channel earlier before that came in. So there was a, a history of content that for myself, I held to a certain standard. And so then when s people started coming in and saying, hey, can you, can you review us? We'll give you some money. And, but it was always like, hey, review us, but like, like a good review though. Yeah. And so, and so you, you see a lot of that wink, wink, nudge, nudge, you know, give us a, a, a review. Um, and I just, I, I hate that. And it's, it's the idea of, of misleading these people that have chosen to come and see my content over the past, you know, year, year and a half, two years, however long. And I, I feel it's, it's just disingenuous. And so any video I've ever done, 
um, about it, whether it be a, a product or a device or a wallet, it's because I use it. Mm. And it's because I've decided this thing's useful. Maybe other people want to learn how to use it. And uh, I mean, I guess I've promoted things, not promoted, but like I've, I've shown things on my channel that might cost money, like a hardware wallet or something. But I've never felt like I was shilling something. I've just said, hey, I use this. It's pretty cool. Um, you know, maybe the price point is high or low or whatever, but I, I just try to be really realistic about what I'm presenting. And even still, you still get uh, uh, pushback from some people if you misspeak or you misrepresent something. So just seeing that pushback, it makes me worry about if, if a project said, hey, talk about us, it give, they give you a bunch of money, and then that project is worthless later on, and then you have people coming at you saying, hey, I lost my life savings because I bought something that you said was great. Um, it's a yeah. constant worry. So that's that's kind of where I'm coming from. Um, so we actually do work with companies um, to help like promote stuff, but I do think that it requires a delicate approach because of all these conflict of interests. Um, so three main things I want to state. I think the first thing is definitely you want to, you have to disclose that you have some sort of like partnership or collaboration or sponsorship. And it's probably actually illegal, but I don't think the, the FTC or whoever is in charge of that in the US comes after you uh, <laughs> unless you're like a big one. I know they come after like Disney and like, a huge influencer, FCC, okay. Okay, sorry, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, so that's the first one, definitely disclose. Second one is that I think it's really important to vet the projects that you're working with because obviously if you just take anything under the sun that offers you some tokens or some ether or whatever and then it turns out to be a scam, that's gonna be a huge black mark on your reputation. So you have to do very thorough vetting and then, um, let's see, what was the third one? On oh, the third one is, I think my approach or our channel Bitcoin for Beginners approach is a little bit different because we don't actually ever like tell people like we give a thumbs up or like a, a nine out of 10 rating or a five out of 10 rating. We never do that. We just break it down and explain like, um, basically give like a white paper overview. And so that's the same approach we take with projects that want like, some some like airtime or whatnot. So we just break down their white paper and then tell people to go take a further look themselves. And this is not like ever financial advice or this doesn't mean that I would personally buy it. Just breaking down the white paper mm -hmm. so that they know this project exists so they can go take a further look rather than giving like a, oh, Kevin gives a thumbs up or Kevin's gonna buy this. We, we've never done that for any videos and it's the same for any projects that we work with. Um, I like to say this, uh, when I talk about ICOs, um, I like to tell my subscribers, if you can't talk to the people who are producing a product, would you invest your money into that? Um, most companies, well, into institutional investors, they're sitting at a table talking with another company, looking at that paperwork, looking at uh, how much money they could possibly bring or how much money they're bringing in already. So you want to have you know, some conversation with somebody if you're putting a huge amount of money in there. And I al always tell my subscribers is that um, if you're not reading any information about um, a certain company, why would you put your money in there? You can't just listen to me and expect me to do all the research. Maybe I've missed something. I, I tell my subscribers, you know, I'm not perfect. And I think that's what a lot of YouTubers should tell their subscribers because, you know, we're all humans. We all make mistakes. So for me personally, I come from an influencer marketing background where, you know, we manage 1.3 billion followers and we have a ton of companies come to us and they look for PR through influencers. And so what I know for my YouTube channel is my personal brand is more important than any sort of paycheck because a personal brand is going to make you way more money long term than anything else. And if you think long term, then you know that. Um, I, but I want to give a real life example of a really good way that I've seen a company do really well in terms of gaining influencer support. And that's Monarch. And uh, it's led by Robert Beatles and say, and something that is funny about them is because, you know, I, I am an advisor to their company and I've, I've done a video of their company, but it's because I went to Jason's house, the CMO of the company. I went to Snay's apartment, the CEO of the company. Mm. I, 
you know, video chatted with Robert and I did an interview with him, the CEO, you know, the, the co-founder of the company. So they built a relationship with me and I gotten, I had gotten to know them. I went out with Snay for dinner multiple times and I learned that they were really great people. And, you know, and then I think the other side to it is the influence. The influencer also has to have, they have to have ethics and morals and values in order to take on any sort of project. And so the other aspect to it is the project just has to make sense, quality over quantity, mm -hmm. all the time for me at least. So, you know, when I'm working with projects, I'm looking at their token economics specifically, because in my opinion, that's one of the most important aspects of a project. And if the token economics don't make sense, why do you need a token? You know, most of the yeah. projects don't need a token. Right. But when the token is backed by an asset, when there's a, you know, there's a security token and a utility token, and things make sense, then it makes me more at ease to take the project on. And as long as they approach me in the proper way. And I think that needs to be different and personable. Mm -hmm. And as long as those two aspects are there, then there's a better opportunity than just to send an email or you know sure. a phone call. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you 100%. I thought that was really, really well said. I think it's really insulting when you get an email that says, dear sir slash madam. And so like you don't even know who I am. Like, why are you messaging me? Why would I help you whatsoever? So I've never promoted a single coin. I've never promoted a single project. Um, I, I, I kind of think there's a conflict of interest inherently, and I don't think I will ever promote a coin or a project. Then again, my situation may be a little bit different in that I'm more of a musician, artist, not really making like video daily content. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing may be different. But in general, I feel like if your living is based off of taking these projects, it becomes much more difficult, I'd imagine, to say like, okay, well, I'm gonna say no to this. I'm gonna, you're gonna say yes to whatever you need to do to like get your situation met on a day-to-day -day basis. But I believe sometimes everybody's trying to put everything back into and blockchain. Just to, back just into, to try, uh, yeah, please. If that if that's your if that's your method as an influencer, you won't be an influencer for long. That's we've seen. To say no to projects or yes to projects, you have to say no to projects. If you're an influencer, you're not saying no to projects. You're not going to be around for a long time because, because you'll have burned your reputation so we, quickly. We've seen influencers, mm -hmm. millions of followers, done the next day because they've taken on a project that they shouldn't have taken on. No. Yeah, actually. So maybe the theme between you and I's talk right now would be no. Right? It's like knowing when to say no. Absolutely. And I think that's maybe an applicable skill to a lot of things outside of even just a, a project influence. I mean, like life, knowing how to say no to things, right? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, uh, just, no. to just to echo all that, we uh, we never have taken a paid promotion. Uh, part of it is, I guess, I feel like, yeah, there's there's always a conflict of interest and um, and there's just so many ways to make Money in the market. If you know how to how to play the market, how to trade well, how to how to get the right long term holds, and um, obviously we come from a development background, so that's really our focus. Um, and obviously, even when you talk about something slightly positively, there's always those comments. Oh, I just bought. Oh, I just bought. Oh, I just bought. And so there's a responsibility there. And I guess yeah, I've just sort of said no to everything, uh, just because. And it, I'm sure there are some of those great projects that we're just saying no to. But if they're such great projects, then they'll they'll make their way into the public consciousness. And whatever, uh, like Naeem was saying, whatever small amount of money they were willing to throw your way isn't worth uh, staking or, or messing up your own position in the community. And that's something that I really, uh, the reason why I set up the channel was to create good information. And so yeah. taking money makes it hard to justify that you're focused only on the information. So I guess just to erase all that doubt, I just said no. Can I tag on sure, one yeah. little thing there? I, I also wanted to say there's nothing more deceptive than not letting your audience know that a project has come to you mm -hmm. and asked you to cover something and and uh, acting like you had just found it yourself and stumbled across, oh, this is cool. Um, I won't say names, but there was, I remember seeing a video where somebody was talking about a project and they're doing the, oh yeah, this one's really cool. And, and then in, in the, I'm sure some of you guys might know who this was, but the, uh, a chat bubble popped up of like, oh yeah, your, your, your request of like two Bitcoin for that video is gonna be, yeah, we'll, we'll take that, we'll give that to you. And he's, and he, slid it he was like whoops didn't see it and it was a live stream so everybody saw it mm -hmm. and so <laughs> you know like but he's you know still around have you been approached by these people trying to give away 10,000 ETH <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> just to just to add to you know what you mentioned in terms of always saying no, I also think that's the wrong idea as well because you have to look at any other industry, any other company, right? You look at Fortnite, for example, one of the most successful video games in the world. The reason is because they were able to pay influencers to go ahead and promote their yeah. product, their game, and that's why it became successful. So if you guys want cryptocurrencies and blockchain to really become something in the future, well, there has to be some form of marketing. There, have to be, there, there has to be some form of advertising, but you, it has to be proper. It has to See, be projects vetted. Do you mind if I proper. piggyback as well? Absolutely. Yeah, so with Coin Daddy, basically, um, you know, it's, he's, uh, it's all about Bitcoin, right? But it's not promotion. It's like evangelizing. I think there's a big difference, right? When you're promoting something, it kind of has a certain association in your mind, right? Everybody thinks they, they know what promotion means. But when you're evangelizing something, you're talking about it out of love. You're just sharing this information. You don't want anything extra back for doing it. When I talked about Bitcoin, I've been talking about Bitcoin since 2013, a very long time. Like It's what I love to talk about it. Whether I'm on a stage or whether I'm uh, anywhere, I'll owe always be talking about it and it wasn't cool to talk about it for a while and I was told to STFU so many times because nobody wants to hear it anymore but now people want to hear it right but that's love that's like the correct promotion in my opinion Absolutely. yeah and I cover coins all the time but just not ones that approach me with a, a monetary offer and a lot of the coins I cover uh, I don't think would even be interested in my promotion because they uh, probably don't need it uh, and, and it's just sort of one of those weird um, you know, balancing acts where a coin only really needs promotion up to a certain point, and then it's like, you know, you don't see the Jed McCaleb's writing checks to influencers to promote Stellar, or you know, uh, Satoshi's not popping out, you know, asking for an influencer shout out. Um, I don't see any of that stuff going on with Litecoin. So you know, it's sort of like once coins reach a certain position in the community, they don't really need to be like shilled. Um, but I, I do hear what you're saying is that there, you can't shut off the mechanism. It's just not what I want for my channel. And, and I just to push back a little, I'm sorry they were kind of ganging up on you, but <laughs> I, I'll just from that. But my response to that is it's, it's quite different promoting uh, a, a, a physical product or something like that if a company comes to you as opposed to an investment, like a, like an actual uh, investment vehicle. So so you're it, it, if you're promoting something like a coin that can you rise and fall in value versus like you you will get this product and this is what the product does. I understand like yes projects and talking about what they're doing perhaps, but but money is coming into play that people can and cannot lose. Whereas if you buy a treasure or something, then you get the treasure, and that's what it is. So it's, yeah, I see a little bit of a difference between the two, but yeah. Yeah, as a marketer, though, I think, and you mentioned some really good points. You know, I if you're a company and you think that you don't need marketing anymore, no matter how big you are, I think that that's a really bad marketing decision or a really bad decision by the CEO of that company or the CMO of that company because Coca-Cola still has a huge advertising budget. You know, the biggest companies in the world have the largest advertising budgets. The biggest companies in the world have the largest marketing budgets. And I think you're more of a shiller if you're only promoting the coins that have already become big because now you're not really taking the time aside to say, hey, why don't I actually put my head down, read these white papers, understand token economics, understand what these white papers say so I can me myself. And the reason I'm passionate about this is I have full-time analysts on my payroll every single day. Their whole the goal is to find projects that have value. And it's it's literally like finding a diamond in a thing of all sand. You know, it's it's horrible. So but why do you need to find another diamond? That's my question. Because I think it's important to find the right projects. Because when you find the right projects, especially if you have a network that can bring funding, then you want to deploy those funds to that project. And the majority of projects that are good that I've seen don't go out looking for funding because they're already working and they've already got funding at least enough funding to start their amazing concept or idea that they've proposed. And that's just from my experience as an angel investor, that's my experience as a marketer. And in the sphere, I've seen the majority of the good companies that actually have something to offer. They're doing private funding, they're, they're raising funds privately. They've got just enough to work on their project and then the ones that are out trying to raise hundreds of millions, there's just no need for it. So which you means know? you are also investing in some of those projects? Oh, absolutely. Okay, so yeah. which means those projects are coming to you and you will take a look, dip, uh, dig into it. Some of those are cool, then you will invest before anybody else. 
I, I yeah, I mean, Sometimes. as an investor, you always if you okay. find something that you feel is lucrative, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Any of you guys do that also? Like investing the projects, maybe. But how? How? I, I like to invest in projects, but I don't like to invest in tokens or coins. I, I'm sorry. I think I agree 100% funding. Yeah, of course you need funding for anything, but it's what it's being funded. And I think it's very important to specify like what is being funded, uh, not a token. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm a big. Fa uh, f I guess I'm a big fan of not liking tokens. Yeah. So uh, same. Uh, yeah, I just think <laughs> that most of this stuff is really disgusting to me. Actually, I think it's shameless. I, I, I think it's very shameful. I should say. I, I think it's like um, everybody's trying to be king of their own hill, and everybody wants their own coin. And because of the dangerous misuse of influencers, not saying anybody here, but in general, we've seen it be misused. It's it's a disgusting practice, and it's it it's. I understand why it is, and I understand the human nature of it. Right? You have to. I get it. But there's other ways to make money. You don't have to make money in that way. But everybody wants the easiest path. They want the lowest hanging fruit. They want to put in no work. They want to trick people. They want to sit on their computer. They don't even have to move. They just have to think. And then the fingers move for them. It's really not cool at all. I, and th there's a big difference between investing in a company versus investing in the token created by the company. So one of the, and, and I'm going to specify here one that I'm like, what are you doing? Is was Kick Messenger. They did a, an ICO for for Kin or whatever the hell they were. So, so it's a, a free messenger platform that, that people use to contact each other. And they did an ICO to create Kin, a token that was just a currency only within their messenger. And so I look at something like that and I'm like, how many how many users of Kick Messenger were demanding to have a currency specific to that messaging platform? And on top of that, why not use any of the plethora of some of the top coins that are already existent and just say, hey, we baked in this feature into our messenger. Now you can use cryptocurrency here instead of now you can use our cryptocurrency that you have to buy. Because of why would you want to participate in someone else's thing? when you can be the creator and king of your own thing. And yes. that's just a human nature, unfortunately. It's this side that sucks. Yeah. And and further to that point too, it's, it's sorry, I'll, I'll pass it down after this <laughs> point, but um, people, a lot of the people that were investing in ICOs this past year, they didn't put together that the success of the company is in no way correlated to the success of the token. So Kick Messenger is a perfect example of that. Kick Messenger could be a multi-billion dollar company and Kin, the token, could be worthless because there's no demand for the amount of supply that they've created. So there's this total disconnect and, and people haven't put that together and I think it's gonna take time, but I, this year has been great for teaching a lot of those hard lessons. Yeah, just to piggyback and I'm, um, you know, Disentangling the two concepts, we talked about being approached to sort of shill, I guess, for lack of a better word, and then finding lucrative or quality investments, as Naeem explained. And I think that those are two very different concepts. So finding quality investments is, I think, what everybody's trying to do, both inside and outside the crypto space, whereas being approached by some random company that you don't necessarily believe in to work with them, that's a lot stickier. Sure. And I think... Uh, they're two just very separate concepts. Yeah, you guys are great. I was trying to ask more questions, but you guys have more, <laughs> just divide the whole questions and have the answer. You're not needed here, Heidi. I know, I'm like, okay. <laughs> but I do have another question. Okay. As I work with a lot of entrepreneurs here in Silicon Valley, so okay, some people will promote, some people will think, okay, I will promote, I will believe what I believe, then I will just do, say that. And some people like, okay, I, I do invest, but I don't invest in tokens and different style. Do you, since you guys are social media kings right now, <laughs> how do you suggest kings. projects? <laughs> kings, yeah, queen, one queen, kings. <laughs> okay, how do you guys suggest projects? <laughs> That's right. Oh. <laughs> and, 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 and the famous words of DJ Khaled, I like that. That's cool. Hey, I didn't finish. Here. How do you suggest those developers? How do they show you social media to promote their own yeah, projects? I, I can Let's talk about this. Do you mind? Go ahead, go ahead. Because it's really happened with CoinDaddy. Okay. So really, uh, I did a talk about this a while back. Um, and uh, basically the premise is this. You want to piggyback off of like minor successes. Like 
little by little, you, you meet people that are a little bit better than you, better, right? But you know what I mean. Please don't take it the wrong way. Like they have more metrics that you desire for yourself. So you want to go with them and you do something for them. Then you take that piece of press and you leverage it or you take that piece of whatever it is and you leverage it onto the next thing. And I'll give you the best example. It's like old, Coin Daddy was built off of like one newspaper article. Like I took that and I stretch it to Vice, I stretch it to CNBC, I stretch it to Bloomberg, I stretch it to, I mean, pretty much every publication you can think of. But that's only because I told everybody all of the other stuff that I had going. So for a developer, now how is that applicable, right? Yeah. If they want to partner or whatever it is with like other interesting people, it's like your, uh, that video game where you rolled over the thing and you got bigger. Do you guys remember that one? Uh, Katamari Damacy, I believe it was called. Yeah. So you get bigger. So you collect all of these like little things, these little uh, morsels, and, and then you add it to your resume. But most people don't do that. Most people are afraid. Uh, they're like too humble. They're afraid of saying like, okay, no, I've done this, and I'm going to do this, and I want this. And I actually like those arrogant. I trust them more than the person who doesn't tell me what they want. I think that's like very disingenuous. I don't trust those people. I wanna know the person who like wants to actually like uh, uh, do things. So developers need to be more open about what they want, more open of sharing like um, uh, what they're doing, in my opinion. Um, yeah, in terms of using social media to promote your project, I think there's a good way to do it and a bad way to do it. And the good way to do it um, in my mind is to kind of use it to gain a, to build a community and to do that, you can provide value, answer interesting questions on people's mind, give constant updates, make it feel like they're with you in the journey to like build your project, sell your vision to them, and then not do anything, not take shortcuts like um, like just spam with like referral links or other stuff that pisses people off. Just um, do it like slow and steady, and get those ro those really like loyal followers in your community, so that even though it's small, they can. They can defend you. They can share with you um, organic discussions that really that really are organic, so they don't feel like insincere on like Reddit or other platforms, um, so that other people can say, "Oh, this this, this seems pretty cool. Maybe I'll join it too." And then slowly by slowly, you'll start to snowball and get a larger community and just like spread word of mouth, perhaps, which is probably one of the most powerful ways you can um, get your project exposure in this space. Heidi, can you repeat the question again? Yeah, what is the best way? for engineers, projects, to use social media to promote their own projects? That is uh, interesting. I've actually talked to a couple of developers when I was in Chicago, and they asked, they, they talked to me about their project, and I talked to them, say, hey, you know, I asked them very, very important questions, but for them to use me, for social media or for them to uh, learn how to use social media, um, I tell them to go to Steemit because Steemit is usually the front of where people um, that's very in intellectual in cryptocurrency just read articles. Mm -hmm. So if you can get someone to read your article instead of watching a video, mm -hmm. I think that's a, a huge step because it takes a while for people to read. It takes a lot of time and in this world we all are watching videos all the time. And I said, you know, start there, then you start a blog somewhere. Okay, so you start a blog somewhere, you get people to read more, and then you pop up the videos. So that's what I thought. So you are suggesting people write instead of making their own videos to start with? Yeah, that was a really good point. Written content, video content, audio content, I mean, you just have to find what fits for you. And I think if you're an engineer, you're a developer, and you want to build some sort of influence on social media, you just look at some of the best that have done it, like Charlie Lee, right? Charlie Lee has Litecoin, top five coin. How is it in the top five? Well, guess what? He's posting on his own Twitter his thoughts, what everything means to him. It's not boring. It's his personal brand. And in today's world, if you don't have a personal brand, your company most likely won't be around for long, and there's obviously exceptions to that. But you look at the major corporations, you know, if I were to ask you who started IBM, maybe some of you would know, but majority of people won't. But if I say who started maybe Microsoft or Apple, you say Bill Gates, you say Steve Jobs, because there's personal brands. And then you have to determine, all right, well, look how successful Microsoft and Apple is compared to IBM right now. 
And so I think having a personal brand behind your company is extremely important. And I think the next decade of successful businesses are going to be businesses that have a personal brand at the forefront and then have a company behind it. Mm, that's a good suggestion. That's really good. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think um, every business owner, especially product developers, imagine that as soon as they put it out in the world, oh, this influencer is going to love it. And why wouldn't they love it? Because in your mind, you've completed some kind of human need that everyone's going to want to satisfy. And the reality is, is uh, you're faced with the same challenges of making your, uh, your product, your idea known that, that these influencers were faced with, that these content creators were. And so yeah, creativity is king. Um, understanding what the right path forward, whether it is more of a, a focus on technical writings or whether yeah. it's about creative sort of out of, you know, out of the box marketing. Um, and then of course, influencers that are in a position to in actual, you know, deliver influence upon humans and make them act and buy and move. Uh, they have the choice of who they work with. So you have to influence them. You have to get their attention. It's not like they're just going to go, okay, cool. You know, like we were just talking about. So yeah, I mean, creativity, it's not easy. Your product has to be uh, amazing. And then your mm -hmm. approach has to be creative and, and a little bit novel. Obviously, having a great personal brand of a founder is, is very useful as well. So all those things. But it's not going to be just something that just happens because you have a great product. And oh, the influencers are just going to work with you because you made it. It's also a double-edged sword because if you have a front-facing uh, persona that that is is taking on all these media relations, if that person has a misstep, a very public misstep, then then it can work the other way. But what happened to Trump? Did that work to his benefit? Trump has the confidence to spin something like that, and I don't think very many people do. I, 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 do, I do marketing campaigns specifically geared towards negative connotations towards the influencer. We're, I'll give you an example because I'm not under the NDA for this one, but we had a, an influencer and he made a rap song against another influencer. Then he already scripted the rap song that he wanted that influencer to rap against him. Ooh. And then he had his already set and that was their marketing campaign and it went viral. And everybody else thought it was just him rapping bad against this guy, and then this guy coming back at him with a crazier rap, and then him finalist. But it was all marketing, mm -hmm. you know? And you look at the most successful marketing campaigns, you can actually do market. There are campaigns that cost so little, but have so much visibility, because it uses fear, it uses, you know, some of these things that, you know, like negative, because the human brain always goes towards negative, if you know human psychology. That's kind of like a Vince McMahon thing. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, look at the new Nike ad that came out that Coin Daddy had a meme of. Uh, I was asked to not wear the shirt. <laughs> I mean, when you when you when you pick the right combination of elements, uh, you get the the sort of viral aspect, and that's I think what modern marketing really aspires to more than anything. Yeah. So is that what you just talk about open source? Yeah. Who, who, what about marketing? Who marketed Bitcoin? And the open we we all did. We all did. Oh, just Every I wanted to add something to this. So there's an example, another funny story. So there was a company that did a billboard, and they basically on the billboard said, we now support Black Lives Matter. And because of that, everyone that didn't support Black Lives Matter were making a big fuss about it on social media. Mm -hmm. That right there was a huge marketing campaign for that company. Mm -hmm. I believe it was Nike. I, I think it was Nike. There, there was that recent one, too, with people burning Nikes. I don't know if you guys saw that, yeah. but people were burning Nikes because they were support. So now you're seeing companies starting to support groups because they know that the counter group is going to want to talk against them and mark them for free. You know, because the smartest companies right now are, and, and the companies I work with, we do monetized marketing to where your PR doesn't cost you money. If you're paying for PR right now, there's a ton of exceptions to this, but for the majority of companies that just want visibility, there's so many ways to do it where it's either a break even or even a profit. Yeah, this made me. I, I would like to go on record and say that blockchains matter. <laughs> <laughs> this made me think about like just so. <laughs> so this made me think about like, for example, Tron CEO Justin Sun. He like to attack Vitalik a lot on social media. Marketing that, genius. So that's one of the way you think other engineers can. Why right? do you think he's so? I mean. He's like a marketing genius. <laughs> every every big, I mean, for the majority of these coins, they're all marketing. I mean, look at what Ripple did. They went on Ellen DeGeneres. They, 
Yeah, man, absolutely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Why do you think he went off in the interview? I don't think that was intentional, but <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw the interview where Roger went off. Also, like, uh, I've, seen, yeah. I've seen also there's a, so there's usually two different type of ways. One are one company just pitching to each of you and give you guys money to say, hey, can you guys do the promotion? It's like really direct, but however, a lot of people don't like it. There's another way uh, I've seen recently is like social media campaigns, for example. Uh, okay, we are having an influencer campaign right now. For example, one of the projects I, I've seen recently, they're saying like, if who did the best video for me will win five Ethereum or 10 Ethereum. Do you think that's something you guys like? Yeah, contest work. You know what I, I see with a lot of these influencers and these companies, the mistakes they make, the majority of the companies don't spend their marketing dollars properly. Mm. They, they just don't know how, they don't know how to properly market their item, their product. But when I think of any concept, any company, if I'm looking to invest in something or I want to come up with an idea so that I can give it to a CEO to go ahead and go and put to life, I'm looking at what is my marketing technique before I even think of what the actual product and use is. Mm. And then you look for what is going to change, what's going to impact. So like, in my opinion, I think that most of these companies need to take a little bit more time to think about their marketing strategy or go to somebody that knows what they're doing, you know, or you end up like some of the, I had a client, we had a client, we did $3 million in PR and then within nine months they burned $10 million and they went out of business, had to let go of all their companies. Their whole company is done and bankrupt. So why? Because they didn't spend their dollars properly. And so it's just sad to see, but we're going to see more of it. And There's people, companies spend money on Google AdWords and also Facebook. Facebook ads. Well, and Facebook ads is the most powerful really platform in the world right now. But yeah, so like, that's just so crazy. So like, to back to my question, do you think for that type, companies through that campaign over there saying like, maybe five Ethereum is nothing at this moment for five BTC. Who did the best video for me? Here's, here's the issue you with guys giving participate? out. Here's the issue with that. The issue with giving out like that is you're attracting the wrong people. Mm. You're attracting the people that don't have money that aren't going to use your product. You know, and I say that from personal experience. I, I remember starting my YouTube channel and doing giveaways. Mm -hmm. And I didn't grow whatsoever. It did nothing for me. I just spent money, lost money. It was an expense on my payroll that I didn't need. Mm -hmm. And when I stopped it, it was because I realized people are being attracted. Like, I attracted the wrong people. And then when I was organic and I really developed a personal relationship with my audience, that's when I started to see real organic fulfilling mm. growth mm. Yeah. i actually don't don't like those design contests at all at all i think it's not fair to the designers i think you have these people that are very hopeful and they're putting all of this time for the chance of being chosen and then most of the time like what every single person other than the one who was chosen was not chosen so they just wasted all of their time and i, I just don't think it's fair to lead someone on with that hope when you're only picking one it's just not cool yeah and we have companies come and they ask for air like we have a ton of airdrop groups right you have fifty thousand telegrams users and we put an airdrop there and let's you distribute tokens and I will tell some of these companies I don't think this is a good investment it doesn't to me the money doesn't matter it's just it, it, what matters is is this going to be an effective use of your capital okay, yeah. and that's the problem that I see with all of these companies that have so much funds and that's why the majority of companies that are raising the majority of these funds they don't know how to probably disperse them and that's so important when starting a company you have to know how to disperse mm -hmm. your funds properly yeah, I think this um, this touches on something that we were discussing earlier, which is a lot of the products in our current, in this industry, cryptocurrency, are actually coins or tokens whose application are not really direct products, but they're sort of mimics or other versions of currently existing tokens. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'll go back that, you know, what we need really are products that affect people that actually solve problems in the world. And actually, when you have great products, that's a viral growth mechanic. That is publicity. When you have a, a product that changes people's day, that makes their day better. How many people found out about Uber through an advertisement? You find out about a great product because someone t tells you about it because word of mouth advertisement is always going to be the strongest. And we still are in our infancy as, as an industry where we don't have products that are making people go, oh my God, look at how much easier my day got because of this. Yeah, I want to add, so let's say you're an actor in Hollywood and you're trying to be successful as an actor. You don't go to the parties where all the actors are, right? Because they're all looking for jobs. You go to the parties where all the producers are, right? And I think that's what we're seeing with a lot of these companies that are in the cryptocurrency sphere, they're spending money on marketing in the cryptocurrency sphere, when in reality, what they need is, in my opinion, to spend their money on is micro-influencers, not macro-influencers. So macro-influencers are influencers that have millions of followers. They cost way more money. But micro-influencers, which, by the way, is where we're going to see influencer marketing go in the next five to seven years, 
are influencers that might have 40 to 50,000 followers, all organic, in a specific hometown for a specific subject. So let's say you're a financial services company, an instrument, and you are trying to market your financial services product. Well, why don't you go to a micro influencers in the finance sector and then offer them the ability to do some sort of legitimate campaign. See, that's the other aspect. You have ICOs, here's $10,000, give me a video. Versus, hey, why don't we build a long-term relationship and see how we can pay you out multiple times, but you also support us multiple times and we build a relationship kind of like how I mentioned Monarch does with the majority of their influencers. And so, you know, I think that's really important right now. It's, it's you got to go to the right parties, you know, and you got to go to the right people. Yeah, if I can just add real quick, um, in terms of your question about contests, I don't think that would be really enticing or get the right crowds like y'all said. Um, but on the other hand, I think that done correctly, things like airdrops or bounties per se could be a good idea because you can get, um, I don't know, it depends on how you structure it, but it, it could be a cost efficient way to get a lot of people into your project, to know about your project and to make some sort of um, contribution, get their skin in the game per se, so they have a reason to like come back and join the discussion and get other people involved. So I think that is something that companies should potentially explore in terms of ways to build their community and get their word out. I think also just to, to echo you saying micro-influencers, even further than that, really engage with just the regular everyday people that, that say, oh, this is cool, I like that, like actually be actively engaging as many people as you can, just the regular people that are using your product because that turns into word of mouth, that, that gives you further reach, so, yeah. I'm not putting down like the airdrop groups or the giveaways and stuff, but there's an overall marketing strategy and these are just aspects of the overall marketing strategy. So, for example, when you do the airdrop alerts, that could be useful if it's part of your visibility in your marketing strategy. So there's always the overall marketing strategy and bam, visibility. Okay, well, you can go ahead and give them out, but that visibility isn't going to convert users. That's a whole different marketing strategy. That's gonna take retargeting. That's gonna take, you know, different aspects of marketing. Okay. So there's, there's just, it's like a huge system. Sure. Yeah, and uh, obviously if you think about what the ultimate goal of someone who joins a contest, joins an airdrop is, mm -hmm. it's not the product. You haven't sparked yeah. their interest in the underlying product. You've just gotten them to know about it and really what they care about is the financial reward. Whereas if you look, you, you know, you use that as a visibility bucket, then you also have referral bonuses for people mm -hmm. who are now inside the system. All of a sudden now people are hearing about it from their friends. You create different sort of social linkages. There's ways that you can promote products. I mean, really successful marketing is as Naeem has been explaining it's multifaceted it's sure. it's many 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 strategies all uh, working yeah. simultaneously since, since we're out of time I do have a very important question for you guys I need a quick answer for this what is the best way so far for you guys to gain followers just, just transparency just be myself I found uh, finding other people and collaborating a lot uh, cross pollination of channels has helped. Collaboration, okay. Generally, just be yourself. Be yourself. Collaboration. Um, for me, it's listening to my community and putting out content that they want to listen to or hear or learn about. Mm, Customize. Uh, consistency, quality, and volume. Okay. Since we have a few minutes, I will make this available to our uh, audience. Anybody have questions here? What's your favorite stand for? <laughs> <laughs> <Big> connect. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I, I think BitConnect got a lot of people into the sphere. It is. It's, it was one of those marketing things, you know? So are, they, are they out now? Oh, the guys are horrible. Yeah. Any questions here? There, there is a question. Yeah, go ahead. Oh. It does work. Our, our Fortnite, my question was for name. Um, Fortnite was free at the beginning, and uh, it developed a crowd. Then they started charging. So, I, yeah. you know, that's... You know, the okay. freemium models are the most effective. I'm actually releasing a platform soon. It's going to be completely free. And there's a way to monetize through invisible marketing, through affiliate links and things like that. So it's the most effective platform. That's what they did. You're right. Yeah. Uh, you should, we, I want to also point out that Bitcoin was free at the beginning. FYI. It was given away in faucets. You could just go to a website, put in your address, and you said, I want Bitcoin, and you would get Bitcoin. Just like that. So it was free. Actually.
and 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 if you realize they're both free and they both added value at the time bitcoin added value because there was a financial crisis people were able to store their money send their money it added value it started free fortnite added value why it was the first real whatever the genre is of the game but the, the you know the type of games where you just go in and you have a hundred royal rumble royal rumbles or whatever it was the first one so added value so you got to always lead with value so th that's why there's just so many facets to this and that's why it's so important to have mentors and advisors that are really really good at what they do and if you want well, to hire him he's available <laughs> when you say i'm leading with value if you want to hire him he's available i said when you say i'm leading with value um a lot of coins that I do look at that trying to raise something, I, I like to see a project either half done or already done. Um, there are coins out there that, you know, the project is done, so they're asking for uh, funds to continue the projects. And, you know, that's something people, a lot of people should look into. That, that is a huge point. Venmo, at one point, they were about to go bankrupt they had one final meeting, and that meeting was a large amount of funds that was invested into them, and then now they eventually sold for, I think, $800 million, and then now they're worth a lot. They were required by PayPal, but it's like what you said. It's so important to lead with that, and, and you see that happen a lot. So the majority of companies that are good, they'll find enough funding to get at least the initial portion of their project up and running, unless it's some extravagant, crazy project. But then, you know, most of those aren't going to go well either. So the majority of projects that are good, they're already making things happen. You know, they're, they're the projects that come and say, hey, like, we've run out of funding. We just need a little bit more because now we're at this point and now we're at this point. And those are the projects that work really well. It's like you don't want to just open up a fire hydrant at any CEO with a ton of like you. You're, that's what you're doing when you fund these projects. You're just opening up a fire hydrant. And now that CEO is overwhelmed with all this money. They have no idea what to do with it versus you spoon feed them money. Here, here's a little bit more. Here's a, and you know, and obviously there's different strategies and, and stuff, but and there's exceptions. But I think like that's what I've seen. You know, and you look at Bitcoin. Did it have a huge amount of funds raised before it started? Yeah. yeah. yeah I think we have a question here. Hi. Yes. Um, I'm with a company pre ICO stage and languishing, of course, in this ridiculous uh, depressed market, and just the whole not even allowed to say ICO. Um, and we're looking at bounties, bounty programs, and I just wanted to know if you have any advice on that and just how to really uh, make the most of very limited funds, but we want to do it right. So bounty programs. I, I have That's a wrong question for the influencer panel. <laughs> I, I'm not, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's hard without knowing what your product is and, and what kind of markets and what the kind of bounties. There's, It's just very open-ended. Um, it's very extreme. But who you want to see is a, somebody that's good at token economics. But really be careful. There's so many bounty hunters. They just grab the token. They don't really do anything. There doesn't seem to be a, a reliable formula or inroad. Yeah, I mean, um, a good place to start looking is on Bitcoin talk forums. That's pretty much a place to go look for bounties or just like post your bounties or whatnot. So you can go take a look at what's been done in the past and um, see how they've worked. Maybe dig into their archives and see how what kind of discussions have went through, what pain points. And you can kind of tweak what pieces you want for your project and what pieces you don't want because there's a lot of different things you can do for it. Like you can have bounties for um, for like people tweeting, for people making content, for people fixing like your website or bug bounty, just a, a ton of different possibilities there. Yeah, uh, I would uh, just further add that um, if you can really look at what you're trying to do, um, look at had you launched whatever you're going to launch before ICOs were a thing, how would you have done it? Um, would a token have been, if you didn't know what a, an ICO was, would you still be thinking, I need some sort of a digital token for what I'm doing, it's entirely necessary for this to work, or did that come after the fact of, hey, this is a way to raise money? Um, so really examine that, because everybody's waking up to that and seeing like, hey, there, here's a project that's having an ICO. What's the token for? 
it, was that necessary? Like did, you could take away the token and it still works just fine. So really examine that because people have opened their eyes to that and they see through it. So um, just really ask yourself, is that token necessary? Yeah. Maybe so we'll so um, I, I work with Heidi who has a mic right now. I helped set this up. I'm in charge of our bounty program. And I had uh, actually brought in about three, three or four interns to handle it. And all they do all day long is just weed out the scammers. And it takes their entire entire effort one guy actually had a concern where one of the scammers stuck in some country found his personal facebook account and tried to bribe him for tokens so that i will contact your girlfriend your mother and all this you don't give me all your tokens <laughs> so bounties don't always give you the best quality of people but it's good for awareness now to wrap up this panel because we have another one coming up right now we're going to pop up on the stage to do another youtuber panel uh, I just want, I, just, I love having so many YouTubers together in one place, collaborating. Uh, it just, it, it warms my soul. So let's start in an meme. You say something nice about the person next to you, we go all the way down to Heidi. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. You got good style, man. <laughs> <sighs> I don't even know you. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. You're obviously smart because you're up here. Thank you, thank you. Um, I think I've caught a couple of your videos before. I really like the editing, so keep it up. Thank you. Uh, BTC Sessions is the number one YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true at all. Um, Coin Daddy. Okay, I actually do have something to say here. Um, so I, as I was coming down here, like I'll admit, I I heard the name, I had seen a picture, and that was all I had. Um, so I was <laughs> telling other people about this. I was like, looked at the picture and I was like, oh, this is what crypto needs right now. <laughs> but then I got here and I, you described to me what you do and I started watching a, a couple things and, and the way that you, you've taken something that you're passionate about and you make funny, accessible content for people. And just in talking to you, realizing you really really know your stuff you've been around for a long time and so um separating that that persona to the person that i've met uh it was really enlightening to to really see how humble and personable everybody has been and i really enjoyed uh meeting you during this trip that's really nice thank you heidi um your outfit's on fleek today <laughs> you look good um thank that's you for work oh that's it here you go. Um, i'm just kidding i'm kidding well, 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 can you say something? <laughs> Yeah, uh, you've done a really good job uh, being a moderator. Um, I felt, why was that funny? Um, <laughs> no. I felt like you've kept everything going pretty well, and uh, thank you for organizing this. Yeah. And Should I say something about you? Or? Yeah. I want to say um, one, one thing about each of you, because I watch all their videos. Uh, Naive's video is really like young. Like I think a lot of like college and also 25-ish. Like, um, we like your content a lot. And um, Brave VC is very down to earth type of like um, the content. And um, Kevin, I just feel very engineering background. This is how I am an engineer myself. So I, I, I like your content a lot. Also Fat TV, definitely very entrepreneur-ish yourself. And talk about TA a lot. I like that, I'm learning that too. And BTC Session is definitely one of the earliest channel I found and I really like his wallet wallet uh, review and also coin daddy i'm just wondering can you teach everybody to wrap their own projects that would be awesome i just had a glimpse of the future <laughs> cool all right oh about you oh okay how do i wrap it up it's by cool. just getting up thank you okay thank you everyone <laughs> hey if you want a picture they're gonna gather for a picture really quickly